Hi, I'm Glenn Farquhar and welcome to Art Fusion Productions. Today I'm going to teach you an art technique which I call Meltdown. And that'll become obvious as we go along. So I'll take you through step by step and hopefully you'll be able to follow this at home and start creating some amazing artworks. So the first thing we have to do is prepare our canvas. I've already got mine ready. I've put a nice gesso coat right across this canvas. At the end of this lesson, I'll show you how to put your gesso coat on and the reasons why we use it. But to get started, we're going to have to start to load some paint onto this canvas. So I'll get a couple of tubes ready and we'll start painting. Now the first coat I'm putting on, I'm using the Atelier Interactive and I'm using the Transparent Red Oxide. You can do whatever colour combinations you like. I'll give you a lot of different examples which I've already created, but it's up to your imagination. It's just once you know the technique, you can take it to wherever you want to. We don't use a lot of paint in this technique, so um, all I'm going to do is just get a bit of the transparent red oxide straight onto my canvas. Then just with a bit of water, I'm just using a basic gesso brush. I'm just going to spread this across that canvas just so we can get a coat on there to give us our first colour. Now I'm not worried about getting it super evenly spread. Now as you can see I've got paint running down there, I'm not worried about that at this stage. You'll always get some running down because um, you're using a wet brush. And also what I'm doing is, I'm thinning it out a little bit as I go down. So it's thicker at the top, a bit thinner at the bottom. Again that's not that important. Once I've got that coat on there, I just do my edges as we go down the canvas, just so it finishes it off. So I've just run that paint just down the edge and that finishes that section of the canvas off. Now I'll use the same brush for most of this. I just have a bucket of water and I just jiggle it into that bucket of water and that cleans it off. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a different colour there and I'm just using a bit of the arillamide yellow, deep. Again it's the interactive paints. I'm going to just do the same thing, just a small little bit of paint there, a little bit of water and just spread that across here. So we're giving us a couple of different colours to start with. We're going to make those colours work to our advantage as we go through. And as you can see that's a a fairly thin coat. We can do thicker if we want, but we'll just try it with a bit of a thin coat to start with. Just do around the sides. We have our first paint on the canvas. Now we can let that just dry off a little bit. We don't want it to dry completely, but another five minutes or something like that at the most, even less. But you can even go straight on and continue painting if I want to. What we want to do, we want to make this paint start to run, to give us that meltdown effect. This is still quite wet, just using a spray bottle from some detergent I had left over. You can use it, it's got to give you a nice powerful spray. If you want a softer spray, you can use a fine mist sprayer, which I can show you one of those in a minute. But what I want to do is just start spraying this, just lightly to start with, at the very top. and we'll get this paint starting to run. Now, it'll look like it's going to get out of control and run very fast. We're not worried about the bottom half of your canvas. This artwork, we start from the top and work down. So we can always start to repair as we go along. Now, you can make this paint run however you like. We can thin it out even more and it'll start to run down into this next layer. And as you can see, 
it's coming back through and thinning that right out which is going to give us a bit of a colour contrast. We can let that just run for a little bit. I'll put a little bit, just a little bit lower and that'll start to pick up again. Now we've got paint running everywhere down here and that's going to happen with this artwork but I'll show you how we repair that as we go along. So it just depends on the look you'd like and no two artworks will ever come out the same doing this style. There's such a free-flowing wet artwork you can't control it so don't try and copy exactly my work or anybody else's because you won't be able to do it I can tell you now. So once I've let that run a little bit I'm going to get my dry brush and just run across here over this yellow. And with the interactive paints, they blend together very well. Other paints, when I start to put it across the top of there, you'll see where the runs were underneath. And they'll be fairly dominant. You've got to really work it to get that out. Uh, I only run across there very lightly and just change that surface again. I've got rid of all these runs that were coming down here. And it's a more controlled run coming through. So we can control it a little bit better by doing it this way. So that's why we work from the top down, not the other way, because as you get up here you'll just be covering over everything you've done below. Now I'm going to introduce a different colour. I'm just going to use a little bit of black. Again it's all the interactive paints, the Atelier. I haven't got this in a tube, I'm just using a little bit out of here, but you only need a small tube anyhow. I'm just going to run some across across that canvas there. A tiny little bit up here. I'm not using much. And then I'm going to get a, a little bit of white and do the same. Now using my same brush, just rinse it out in your water. Jiggling it up and down on the bottom of the bucket takes most of that paint out. Now I've still got a fairly wet brush because I've just put it into that water. I just shake a little bit of that paint, uh, the water out, and then away we go. Now I'm using the white, and then I'm going to pick up the black, so we end up with a darker colour here, like a dark grey. But as you can see, I'm just working up to the top of that other yellow and just run through like so until I've got a line through there leave that white like that and I continue down with the black because we want a bit of darkened shade working on here a little bit of water just to get a bit more of a spread going And as you can see, this paint's still working its way down. I'm just stretching this, this black down. So it's a bit thinner at the bottom here. And as always, I'm just going to finish off the sides. And that gives us a finished right round the artwork when we get to the end of the artwork. Now we've got down to this level, I want to work something here to bring some of this colour down. Now whenever you get a colour dropping in like that and you don't want it, just with your brush, just run through and that'll just take that away. Now that's giving me a different colour to work with again. I've got that bit of paint running down there, that's fine, I'm happy with that. What I want to do is put a bit of a break in this layering. So to break it up, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a bit of black, put some on my table. You can put it on anything that you have available. And then with just anything, this is just a bit of Perspex type. It's only about, you know, three millimeters thick. You can make it wider. And I'm just going to 
put some paint on the edge of that. Then along here, I'm just going to use it and just drag it across. I want the paint reasonably thick on it. And what it's doing is just defining a break between those layers and just gives a bit of interest to that part of the artwork. A bit of black always highlights things. You can make this as wide as you like. I, I just do it a little bit thin and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's just an obvious barrier. <coughs> and once I have that there, then I just can get my bottle again. And I'm going to spray the top half here. A little bit over there, it doesn't matter. But mainly on this top half where the white is. As you can see, the white is bleeding down and coming down over that black a bit. If I want a bit more white to come through, just give a couple of harder squirts in a few spots there and that'll draw that white out. And we start getting another layer of the paints coming down. If I want some of that yellow to come down and a little bit more of this to come into this one, just a quick little squirt like that and that'll start that again and get it active. And some of that will run down. So it's up to you what look you want. If I'm not happy with that coming through there, and I don't want that to keep coming through after putting a bit of water on, you can control that to a certain degree. And that's by just getting your brush with the black in it and just running straight across. I've picked up the white. I've stopped the majority of that coming through and just run it right underneath that black line. And then you can continue right through. Start that whole bottom section again. Which I'll do just with a couple of light squirts. And you can see it picking up that white going down over that darker colour. So it's up to you how much of that effect you have and where you have it. A little bit of these colours coming down in a few spots, you'll get all sorts of little patterns starting to create. If I do want to pick a little bit more of that up, I just up a little bit higher with my sprayer so it just overlaps onto that yellow and some of these will start to come down as well. So now I'm just going to clean my brush out again quickly and again that's just by jiggling it up and down in your water. I've got very dirty water there now but it still comes out quite clean, you'll be surprised. Shake the excess water off into your container. I'm going to start up the top here again now. So what I want to do here is I'm going to use the same colours pretty much that we've used but I'm just going to rotate them around a little bit. So this time I'll start the top dark. So again, just with a bit of black, I'm just going to run a little bit across the top there. As you can see, I haven't loaded a lot of paint on there. You don't need a large amount of paint for this to work for you. Then again, a little bit of white. Your brush just with a bit of water on it and we'll get the black working first. Now I'm not coming right across and covering this one because you'll see why later. Then down and pick up some of this white. Now I'll just put a little bit more water on my brush. I'm going to spread this down a bit further and get it a little bit thinner. Move a little bit of water. And we'll get this right across that canvas there. And you notice I haven't blended all of that in. I'll just run across just that little bit, just to blend it up a bit at the top. But I want it to be uneven in that blending process. Finish off around the sides. So always try and remember to finish your sides off. It's much easier to do it now than later. So 
So there we've got the next layer of colour on. And again, we're back to the spray bottle. You can have no spray on the top if you like and start your spraying down here. It's up to you what look you want. But you can put some on and as you saw, if it doesn't work out, you can paint across it again. What I want here is that dark is going to come down across that light. And the contrast in the colours really they define very well and it almost gives you a bit of a horizon look. It's an unusual effect that you can create from that. And I'll just let that run by itself. I'm not worried about down here again like I was before. We'll just let that run for a little bit and it'll make its own patterns. And that's probably all I'll put on that top section. And I'll leave this section as it is. Because I just want that to be running down across into that more solid paint area. Then we go from there and I'll start putting some more colours on and we'll load some things up. So firstly, just take that excess off the, the brush. And just a, some really quick hard up and down with the brush. That black's gone. Give it a shake out like so. Probably not right up next to your painting like I did because it ends up splashing onto it, but that's okay. Now the brush I'm using, just so you know, that's just a gesso brush. You buy those from all your art stores and they're really cheap and you can throw them away when you're finished or wash them out. I use them in so many of my artworks. It's just an easy, cheap way of using a brush. If I've got work that's finer and you know, I want more detail, of course I'll use different brushes and I'll talk about those on different artworks. But you'll notice most of the art I do, I'm using one of these brushes. Abstract like this, you don't need fancy, expensive brushes. So I'm just going to run across there and thin those runs out that are coming down the canvas. There's only a few. And we'll cover all that as we go. So now I've got to decide on a colour. So I'm going to run through some more of the transparent red oxide. And with the brush, just a little bit of water, dip it in. I'm dipping it in my dirty water, I don't care because the pigments in the paint are so strong, it quickly overpowers any little bit of residue you've got on your brush. And I don't mind a bit of residue because we're blending anyhow. As you see, I'm coming up here into the black, so I'll pick up a little bit of that black anyhow in my brush. So I'm not being particular with my colours here because that's what this is, that's why it's called Meltdown. The colours all bleed into each other. So in doing that, it makes it work. And I'm just spreading that out with that one bit of water in that brush. And you can do as far down as you like. I'm just going to take this down a little bit further. Just to about there. Now what I want to do, I want to put a little bit more yellow in. Again, I'll clean my brush. Sorry for putting the head down out of the way, but I think you know how to do that now. Back to my yellow. And with that wet brush, straight across. Run my brush on its edge and just join the two together. Like so. And we go around the side and do the yellow. And what I'm sure you all noticed, I didn't do the side with my red oxide, so that's not a problem. I'll just empty that brush out in the water, just with my red oxide, a little bit on the brush, not much, just a tiny little bit's all I need. So 
So if you do forget, it's not the end of the world. You can finish it off. It's just so much easier when your brush is already loaded. Okay. Now we're going to work with this area here. Again, I'm going to put another line through there in the same fashion as I did before. I've still got paint on my table here. So I'm, you're not using a lot of paint doing this. And I'm just going to run that line through. And all this does is gives a bit of definition to the artwork. A little bit of an added interest. You know, and I'm not worrying about a perfect line. And this line I put through here, I only do that, it just gives it a bit of definition, a bit of character to the artwork. So now we've got that through, back to your spray bottle. And I'll do a couple across the top of this red oxide and get that to start to run. Once it starts running, then I can just watch it and do the same thing as we did on the other side. I can have it light or dark, I can keep it very dark running through the top there and let it lighten up in different spots in the centre. Tiny bit on the top. And as I say, they're all just so free flowing, no two will be the same. So you can just experiment. And even when you finish the whole canvas, if you're not happy with it, you can just get your brush and paint right through. Once it's dry, put your gesso on, start again. And you don't use a large amount of paints on this, so it's not expensive. So don't worry if it doesn't work out. Just before it dries off, have a look at it. If you're not happy, paint it out. Let it dry, then gesso. Start again. Don't waste your canvas and you hardly lose any paint. You can't be expected to get a great finish the first time. You've got to experiment, practice. That's what art's all about. I'll show you the technique and I'll see some amazing artworks coming from all the people around the world who send them to me. And please do, I love seeing them. And I will respond to you. So I'm just adding a bit more on here. I might un make it a bit uneven. I'll hit a bit extra over here and a little bit extra over here and maybe a bit in the middle. And that'll start to break up and then start making its own design as it goes down. If I do want a bit of the grey in, just like we did over here, you can see how I've left this and I just sprayed a little bit on the top here and gradually, just a few places, the yellow has come down through and made its own designs running down. So it's not just two-dimensional, just two colours coming through. We've got black, we've got white, we've got the yellow, and a little bit of the oxides come down into that as well. So it makes some really interesting designs. And so sit back and just watch what that's happening on that side. That's why I've left it. If I want to change this side, I still can, because the paints we're using are the... Atelier Interactives and the advantage of those over normal acrylics is that a normal acrylic once that dries you can't get it to work any further but with the interactive paint that can dry off and if you want to reactivate it we just get the brush with water or the spray bottle and that will be able to be workable again so you can change it so that's the advantage of using this paint so you have a bit more flexibility. And, um, you know, as you can see, I'm not using large amounts of paint. This is quite a good sized canvas, a big canvas, but only small amounts. We won't even use a tube of each of these art paints at all on this one artwork. So don't be afraid to experiment with it. That's the only way you get anywhere is experimenting. Now I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of water here, just a few light squirts. And there we go, we've got that other paint coming down through. I could have left that and had a clean line if I wanted to, but I'll just let some run down through. Now down here, again, we can tidy this up if we want. I'll empty my brush out. Shake some of that water out. I shake on the floor because my studio is a mess. You have to work out how you're going to do this in your home. I'll just 
run straight through again. And you can see how that paint is blended so easily. That's because it's the interactive. That may not have blended that easily just with ordinary artist acrylics. Now, I'm just going to put another black line through there. Just the same as we have. Now, I'm working quite quickly with this. I'm not letting any of this dry too much. If I was to let some of this dry a bit more, when you squirt it, you'll have less paint running, so you can get even a different effect again. So experiment by letting one section dry off a bit. Go away and just make a cup of coffee, come back, and then keep working again. And you'll find that when you spray on where it's a bit drier, you'll get less runs, and it'll give you a smoother effect, a different effect. So I'm just taking it one step at a time going through here. And I might go back and we'll spray a bit later. We'll see how we go. But again, just running this straight through. And by running it through, the more you run that backwards and forwards, you'll weaken that paint and you'll have more bleed come down by doing it that way. Now I only want a little bit of this running through, so I'm just going to put a little bit of water on the yellow there, underneath that line I just run through. I'm just going to let some of that run. I've already got some of these coming through. I'm not going to put any more water on there. I'm just going to leave that like that, because some will still continue down. So you'll get a little bit coming through. Now I've got to that stage, it's just coming up with ideas on how you're going to make this look a little bit interesting. I've left this gap here for a reason. I didn't need paint there, because I'm going to put it there now. Just with the black, I'm just putting a little bit on my table, because I've already got some on there. Then I'll get my brush. That's how easy it is, just a quick in the bucket like I've been showing you. Just load my brush, brush with the black. And I'm just going to come straight down the centre here. And this is how, just a bit more on there, this is how we combine the two together. Just put a little bit of water on, because I want to be able to spread that a bit easier. Now again, I'm not, not getting any particularly straight line running down there, just where the paint runs, like so. A little bit of water, just to get to the other side. And that'll give me a line running straight up through here. There you go. And I've finished off reasonably level with those colours through there. So that's suddenly brought the two sides together. So that's finished off in the middle. I'll probably do another little intricate little bit there using a bit of white. Just getting a little bit of the white. Whoop, out it comes. Just put a little, a couple of little dabs just there like that. Then using my same bit of board, I've still got some black on it, I'm not worried. I'll just... just this just gives it a bit of a break and a little bit of a highlight down that centre. You can run another little bit, run on the side of you, with a bit of whites on the side, pick up. Just mucking around with this, just to take the plain black off it. So there's no fine detail here. That just breaks that up a little bit and gives it a little bit of character. Now we've got 
what I'd call the top half done. We're going to finish off the bottom. And just by putting this bit of black through here, suddenly pulled the artwork together. Even though it looked, looked totally disjointed. Now we're just going to finish off through here. Again, you do it whichever way you want to. I'm just giving you some good ideas. Just using my black brush again, using the black that's on my table, I'm just going to run straight through here. I'm going to go all the way through. Now to spread that paint, just dip it in the water a bit, get a little bit of water on there, and we can spread it right through. And again, I'm not worried about how perfectly straight it is. But just that one little bit of black paint running through there, and I've put a complete line right through. Finish off around the side. Finish off around this side. That's the first step we're doing there. Now I'm just going to bring this down with some white. I started off with only a quarter of a tube of white in here, so I'm going straight through. And it's not a huge amount of white. I'm just going to wash that black out. Shake the bulk of the water out. So to start off with a, a brush that's just a bit wet. I'm spreading that through. I'm going to spread it down. I'm going downwards with that paint to start with. Now I'm not worried about picking up some of that colour. It's all part of the artwork. A little bit of water to help that paint spread. And where you see, you might see the dribbles running through. If I keep working that because it's the interactive paint, it'll break that down and they'll start to blend in. But I'm not worried about it if it doesn't anyhow because it's all part of the meltdown style. So I've just got that little bit more water on, spreading this down. A little bit more water. Running down a bit lower, thinning that out as I go down. Now I'm going to work up to the top. And eventually bring it into that black. So just slowly work that paint very close to the black. I don't want to go right up into this black. I just want to come into the bottom of it like so. I'm just working that paint through. This is still fairly thick paint. I haven't got a lot of water in this brush. But I'm just working it up until we get into that black area. I'm going to take it right across in one sweep and one more right the way back. And that leaves me with a definite black band running through there, which is actually breaking the artwork up. Then I can run through, still a bit of black in that paint, and it's just giving me a little bit of an interest. So I don't have solid white, it's more of a light grey we've got running through there. And down here it's getting quite thin because I've put that water in with it. So this bottom section's thinner. Round to the side. Cross to the other side. As far as the sides are concerned, my artwork's finished as we go down. Now that gives me some a different break up. So this part of the canvas is going to be a completely different artwork to the top. Now I want to make that work for me a little bit with some meltdown. So again, I'm just running this across here. I'm not coming up here. I'm just keeping my spray down here. I don't really want to bring too much from the top down. I'm 
Now just by giving it a little bit like that, just let it start to run and we'll see what happens with it. And you'll see where there's some black in here. I can make that react better with the white again by spraying some more on once I just let this paint get a bit wet. So once that soaks in, I can hit it again with another bit of a spray. And you can see the dark areas will start to run. So it just gives us a bit of a, a gentle running of the paint in this area through here. I don't want it to be too obvious. So it's just looking a bit different from the top. You can see it's starting to work here where those little bits of the dark grey are picking up the water and giving us more of a subtle effect. If I want this to pick up a little bit more, just a tiny squirt and that'll start capturing that paint. Just here, tiny little squirt and then that'll start to run down as well. So it's just giving us a different, you keep squirting it how you feel you want it to be. If it ends up not looking right, we just get our brush, run across it again, just like I did up here. And if I want to pick up a little bit of the black, just run close to the top and get it a bit on the corner of your brush. So it just picks up on the edge of your brush, through there like that. And that'll be enough of the black just to run through and get a few lines running through there. So that's just going to work its magic over the next few minutes and it's just going to keep running down. Just in here I don't have a lot of run so I'll just give it a tiny hit and that'll just start something happening there as well. Now I've just got to finish off the bottom, work out what colour I want to put into there. I'm still using all the same colours so I'm just going to do something a bit softer through there. So still using my white brush I'm just going to put a little bit of the red oxide through. I'm really not squirting much on there at all. I don't know you can see, but there's not a real big build up of paint. Just enough to get a bit of colour on there. Because I want to work in with this paint that's just at the top there. So just using the same brush, coming straight through. Now I'm just making this up as I go. I, I didn't have a set plan for this artwork. I'm just doing it as I go. That's where my ideas normally come from. Most of the things I do are spontaneous. Um, very rarely will I plan something to be exactly how I want it. Every artwork I do really is a bit of an experiment. And you can see how I've just run that bit through there. So I've got a dark line run through, but it's still blended a little bit up the top there. Just run around the side. And that's the continuity runs down. Now we've got another colour running in there. But I want to fade this away now down the bottom and keep this fairly soft. So again, a bit more white. I'm running out of paint on this tube. I might have to go to another one. But as I say, I only started with a quarter of a tube. Wasn't much in it. We'll just get enough out to finish this off. Now this is where you can use a lot of your leftover paints. You've got a little bit left in tubes. That's where you can put it on an artwork like this because you're not using big amounts and pull those bits of paint out that you've got left over. Compatible paints always work better together if you're using a certain technique. Um, you know, I'm using interactive so I'll do all interactive on here, the Atelier. Uh, if I was doing A2, I would use A2. But they work a little bit differently, all paints do. But you can see how this is working for me here. Now we've got that white, I'm just going to spread that out like we do all the time. Using my same brush with that bit of a dirty bit of uh, red oxide on it still. And then I'm just going to, just with a tiny bit of water on that brush, just get this spread. 
starting up near the top area to get that white running through up to the oxide. Just bringing it right up and into the oxide just so they're blended together. That's got, that's got that joined and I've got a, a fairly definite line there. A little bit of water and I'm going to spread the rest of this out. And as you can see, I'm covering over most of those runs that were coming down there. And I'll just work that paint into that canvas, being a white. Tiny bit of water again. And the more I work on that paint that's under there, those runs, the more this will start to eat into it. And that interactive paint will help break that up a bit. But I don't mind if they still leave some faint signs of it coming through. It doesn't bother me. The whole artwork has that running through it. And as you can see, just using a dirty brush, I pick up bits of other colour out of there sometimes. And I was getting a build up of paint around here. Just run the brush a bit flatter and that'll pull that paint off. I even picked up a few little bits of black. And I'm quite happy with that. And now we've got the next stage. Just finish off the sides. And of course now we go back to our spray bottle. I can leave it like this so this stays soft, this bottom section. And just run a bit through. I'm keeping the water down at about this level. A little bit of spray goes onto there, but at this stage I don't want to pull too much of the dark out. I'm just getting the bottom running a bit. Once I've gone through, you can see some of this coming down. I'll just get nice and close to that oxide and put a bit on the oxide. Now that started that oxide moving. And we'll just leave that and let it sit and see how it eventuates. Because it's slowly going to run down and start to bleed through there. If we want to make things start to react a bit more, you can just run your brush through while that bit of water is on there. And that'll just break down that paint a little bit. So the next time that I run the water bottle on there, it'll break it up even quicker. So just So the top half of our canvas is fairly striking with rich colours and we've softened it right off at the bottom. So it's almost two artworks in one. And I can just leave that go and just let it run. I might want to squirt a little bit on the bottom down here just to make that bottom section react right through. And if I just let that go, that paint's going to do its own thing. Now I can leave that exactly as it is. That can be a finished artwork, or I can do some highlights on it. And that's very easy as well. Black is always a good colour to create a highlight. Again, a little bit of black on my table. Back to my trusty little bit of Perspex. And we can give a few little tricky bits in here. Just by putting it on, I'll come around this side so you can see better. Just something like that. Just a little, little line there. Might do the same with just a black line here. Just make sure you get a bit on that edge. You can do it as long as you like. I can bring one in off here. Bit of black against your other colours always gives that bit more of a highlight. A little bit dropping down, doesn't matter. Run another one through here.
and by having a bit on that one as well, it all works together. I'll put a little one down here. You don't have to put this in, but just breaks the painting up a little bit. All I'm doing is dabbing that onto that paint. It's as many as you like, anywhere you like. But it just gives it a little bit of a sharp contrast with your colours. And while I've been doing that, you can see how this is all starting to run through there. Now I can keep applying water if I want to make this really run down, or I can leave it as it is. We'll just put a little bit of extra on just to see what effect you'll get. By keeping it up in the top area a little bit, I'm trying not to go up into this area. I'm happy with the way they're running down. So I just keep it up just under that oxide. With a little bit of a firm squirt and that's going to allow more to run down again so that's slowly going to come down and close over that area. I could have left that with no running through there at all. It's just whatever suits you and makes you feel good. But you can see how this is starting to break down the thinner areas of the paint so we're getting a bit of light and shade in through there and it's all slowly going to run down there and that'll finish off the artwork. So that's really how we do meltdown basically. You've seen a whole artwork come together. You use a completely different colour, you'll have a different artwork obviously. You can do a long artwork, you can do short ones, uh, narrow ones running straight down, do them in sets, all different ways you can create something. They're just fun to do. You experiment with them because you're not using large amounts of paint and have some fun with it and you'll find the paints react differently. As I say, if you just let the paint go off a little bit, and then spray it, you'll get a little bit of a different running effect to when you do it wet on wet. So have some fun with that. I'll show you some more examples. So until next time, happy painting. Well, now I'd like to give you some examples of what you can do with Meltdown. It's all up to you in the end of the day, but we'll show you a few different colour combinations and so forth. This, this one here is with your blues. Only the one colour blue, I've just used white, black and blue. Again, nice and bright, a little bit similar in the colour combinations that I've just shown you. Round here, we've gone a lot brighter. We've got some greens and yellows and blues all tied in together. This one through here, very neutral. Um, I've only used some black, some grey, some burnt sienna and um, just blended them all together and comes up with a beautiful artwork like this all flowing from one end of the canvas to the other rather than being broken up like the other ones so it creates one painting without that combination of styles. Across here same technique basically as one we've just shown you except using a different colour combination and throwing a few black highlights in and a few white highlights and then spraying onto those which then creates that different colour run coming down. So a bit of the white will pick up, a bit of the black will pick up. So that's what I say experiment. When I started that I had no idea how it was going to finish. It just worked its way through as I went. And that's how you do this style of art. And just one more over here with different combinations again including some blues in your earthy tones and again a completely different looking artwork. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that come together and you just experiment and you'll be surprised at the artworks you'll come up with. They don't all work out perfectly, there's plenty that I've painted over in the time as well. But as I said, smooth it out, put some gesso on and you can start again fresh. So until then, happy painting. 
I'd like to give you a recap on the artist materials we use to create Meltdown. One of the most common questions I always receive on the website is what paints did I use, where do you get them from? Now a lot of the paints that I've used aren't available worldwide and because I have so many followers worldwide I'm now using Chroma paints. Not just because of that reason, they are, I would class, the best quality paints on the market. Uh, they're available in 33 countries, so you just have to go online and you'll find where you can get the paint very easily. I'll give you all those details. Now just to recap on the paints we used, to do this artwork, I was using the Atelier Interactive Paints, and one colour I used was the Arillamide Yellow Deep. The other one was the Transparent Red Oxide. Titanium White. And I used a very small amount of Burnt Sienna along the bottom of the artwork. Plus I used the Carbon Black. So it was all Atelier interactive that I was used on this artwork. Some of the other materials I use, don't need much for this one, I just used a gesso brush, very basic gesso brush, a little bit of perspex to put the highlights on with, and of course a spray bottle. And that's all you need to create an artwork like Meltdown, and it's up to your imagination how creative you become with it. So experiment, have some fun, and happy painting.